Hi, Miranda. Uh, welcome to the podcast. It's so nice to have you here. Hi, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough, actually. I'm really excited to uh, to be here with you today. So today we're going to talk about the world of payments. Uh, Miranda has been in the payments world for a while. So uh, I hope to get some insights uh, into the industry, what's happening there, um, what kind of issues um, people tend to deal with in this industry. And uh, we'll see how the conversation would go and take us somewhere else, maybe. Um, so Miranda, let's start with... Um, just uh you telling us a little bit about yourself um how how long you've been in in the payments uh yeah for sure for sure so i am uh, originally from a place called winnipeg manitoba which is kind of in the center of canada and in my early 20s I started working for a few banks. So I worked for the Royal Bank of Canada, and then I also had an opportunity um, here in Canada through a subsidiary company of Bank of America uh, before the recession. So that was kind of the beginning of my career and my uh, insight into the world of banking and fintech. And um, just to give you a fun little tidbit, when I was working at uh, the Royal Bank of Canada, that would have been probably 2007 or 2006. And that was when online banking was just getting its start here in Canada. So I'm aging myself, but um, yeah, that was really kind of my first insight into, uh, you know, the financial world, how everything works. And I found it really, really interesting. <clears throat> um, not only the like flow, you know, the cash flow and the flow of currency, but also the technical side of it. Um, uh, so I worked there for a while and then I decided in 2011 to move to Montreal, Canada, Montreal, Quebec, where I'm located now. And I actually moved here for an opportunity in payments. And that's a funny story. I did the job interview over the phone in 2011 <laughs> with a, a very small ISO. Um, which stands for independent sales organization. And that was a, uh, a sales uh, role. So cold calling businesses, asking for their processing statements. And that was really when I started to get into payments. Um, I stayed with that company for a, a short period of time. And then I moved over to a company called Secure Merchant Solutions, which is also uh, an ISO. Um, and with that company, I was with them for almost five years. And that's really when I started to get an insight into how the world of payments works. So uh, U.S. focused, that's always kind of been my my um, focus and my target market, uh, particularly because there are, you know, uh, much more businesses within the US, but the landscape there is very competitive. It's a very interesting market. All right. Um, yeah, just to, to kind of uh, backtrack a little bit there. So I, you know, finished uh, quite a few different roles at Secure Merchant. Um, Solutions really got to understand the payments market and landscape in the US. And then I was uh, very, very, very lucky to get an opportunity with a company called Paysafe. Um, which had a headquarters here in Montreal. And I believe they still do. I think they are um, they might be moving it around to Florida. There's a new CEO there. Uh, but I you know, started working there as a uh, partner manager for their independent software vendor channel. And that is really what kind of sparked my interest in dealing with their APIs, I managed a book of business of around, give or take, 20 software providers who were using Paysafe solutions um, for an integrated payments offering. And a lot of what that you know, taught me was, number one, relationship management, which I know when we think about payments, you know, we're thinking about cost and the flow of funds and technology and all of that. Uh, but so much of it is really, really, really relationship based and really the only way for 
there to be a successful partnership between merchant or company or whatever you want to call them and a payment provider um, is the relationship in itself. So I got to develop some really, really, really grounded, uh, solid relationships with not only partners, but with industry leaders in the space. And then I really got to work with um, the different departments, product uh, developers, um, UX, trying different things within the org. Um, a lot of you know business acumen and knowledge as well came through that particular role. Um, I had a very good mentor uh, at the time, Carla Ehrlich, who is really well known in the payment space, and she taught me, um, you know, quite a bit about uh, the business overall, um, which you know I'm forever grateful for. Um, so when when COVID hit, the landscape started to change a little bit in 2020. Uh, certain verticals, it was becoming, you know, quite clear that they would be impacted more than others. And at that particular time, we were, you know, working quite a bit. And I had a conversation with my partner um, at the time, who's my my life partner and business partner. And we started to kind of poke around uh, the idea of, you know, going off on our own. And we didn't necessarily know what we wanted to do. We had thought about becoming you know, an independent sales organization ourselves and going out and, and selling merchants and onboarding them with different providers. Uh, but that model wasn't really what we were looking for. Um, so in 2020, I actually had an opportunity come through from a, a very good friend of mine, Betty, to film a documentary here in uh, Montreal. Um, and the documentary was uh, focused on Quebec and people immigrating into Quebec from and into Montreal all, from all over the world. And I was uh, part of a, a segment of the, the 2010 and later, um, and I was representing Canada at the time. So I got to film this documentary, which was really cool. And I ran into um, someone uh, by the name of Afrina, who is uh, definitely someone who's a, a mentor, a really beautiful person. And I got to talking with her and she took one look at me and she said, everyone needs someone who understands payments. And she said, I highly recommend that when you go home tonight, you update your LinkedIn and you say you're on your own and you work in payments. And she said, just do it, rip it off like a bandaid and just do it. So I took her advice, came home and I did that. And over the next week or so, um, I'm, I was part of a, a few women in entrepreneur groups, um, one in Montreal uh, on Facebook, Facebook groups, one in Montreal and one in Toronto. And I put, I think I did like two posts, one or two posts in the Toronto group, uh, just saying, you know, I'm offering a 30 minute consultation. Um, if you're accepting payments or, or need any help with, with understanding payments. Uh, it was really short. It was really brief. And it was kind of just a, you know, like a, a fishing rod out there to see if I could, if I could network. And through that, I had a, an opportunity um, to meet someone, uh, Camille, who is also a consultant uh, based out of Toronto. And she reached out to me and she said, hey, I have a software client who's looking to get into payments. And that was when I was like, well, that's exactly what I do. It's exactly what I specialize in. And that was our, our first client. So, so from there on, that's, that was 2021, uh, May, April, 2021. And since then, uh, my partner and I ha have been working straight, uh, which is fantastic. So two years and eight months as independent consultants. And we've really structured our business as a consultancy. Um, so I'm the founder, my partner is the co-founder uh, coming into next year. We are looking at uh, leveraging a few intern relationships through some universities here and uh, bringing on a, a couple of uh, folks to help us build our portfolio and also, uh, you know, individuals that we can mentor. That's something that's really important to us. Quite an impressive path. A lot uh, of good congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk a bit about uh, the landscape of payments in general. Um, 
is it is it too much difference between the U.S. and Canada? Uh, like, how, how would you describe? Uh, is is it more or less the same, or is it dramatically different? Yeah. So the I would I would describe the landscape as is very very different um, between the U.S. and Canada. Canada is very small. Uh, I think our overall population right now is thirty eight million. Um, so we're just shy of the population of California and the U.S. So that's one real difference. The other um, real significant difference is the structure of uh, interchange rates, um, the market itself, who holds the market. Uh, a lot of small businesses here in Canada, if they need p payments, um, you know, a lot of them are going to go to their bank, actually, uh, and sit down with their financial advisor at the bank and sign up with a, a Moneris, uh, which I believe is owned by RBC and um, BMO. One of the changes that has happened over the last decade, I would say, or maybe even the last five years more so, are the, the stripes and the squares of the world. Um, a lot of small businesses are, are going that route. So it's similar in that route compared to the U.S., but the interchange rates are uh, very different, a little bit more regulated. You know, in the U.S., there's there's a list of like three to four hundred different types of interchange rates uh, that a card can fall into. And here in Canada, uh, the list is much smaller. It's very stagnant and controlled more so, I would say. And also in the U.S., you've got not only, uh, you know, the entire landscape itself at the federal level, level with federal regulations, but you also have some of the nuances that you can find between the between the different states. So some states allow search, mm -hmm. some don't. So it is once you get into the U.S., it's, it's not static. a static market. It's very segmented based on business type vertical. Um, you've got banks, you've got payment providers, you've got ISO levels, you've got resellers. It's very... It's very stagnant. It's a very complex um, market in the U.S. compared to Canada. We have um, a couple of partners that we worked with here in Canada, one in Quebec and one in B.C. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we work with them to the extent of assisting them with kind of tightening up their processes, um, their software companies. So that's you know a big thing that we do with them. But in the U.S., um, because there's so many complexities, uh, we can you know that's our target market, and that's really where our kind of bread and butter clients live. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense. Are there any key players on the market, uh, specifically in the U.S., uh, that stand out uh, from the crowd? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It it depends on vertical again, right? Like if you look at a, a segmented market, so you've got the SMBs as we would call them or SMEs. That's just kind of a, um, a B2B model, just a, a maybe a small mom and pop or even fr some franchises you could fit into that model. If they are accepting um, card present payments, so they've got, a, let's say, a terminal Maybe they do have an integrated solution or they don't have an integrated solution. There are absolutely some of the, the key players who have been around for a really long time. Uh, you know, the, the FIS, the WorldPay, uh, Chase, JP, JP Morgan Chase still holds a good part of that market. Global Payments, um, that list kind of kind of goes on. I think where we're seeing a lot of the change and competitiveness in the market is the, through the integrated payment solutions. So e-commerce, um, independent software vendors, and SaaS companies, which is one of our business's uh, niche offerings, is our knowledge um, specific to teaching SaaS companies how to turn a profit and earn revenue off of embedded and integrated payments. And that's where the market is less competitive and there are really only a few good players in that space right now. It's very, very niche. Um, it requires a lot of overhead and management. And that's why I think even just over the past few years, we've even, even seen some of the providers leave this space and not necessarily cater to this mm -hmm. space because of, because of that overhead management. Yeah. 
So what are the, um, in your opinion, main challenges, main problems in the industry uh, other than the overhead management? Yeah, I would say one of the number one challenges is the lack of understanding uh, of the payments landscape, the payments language, the pricing structure uh, at the consumer level. And again, a consumer can be small, medium-sized business, medium-sized business, a cor corporate account, corporation, uh, e-com, uh, all consumers. So that's where we're seeing a lot of gaps is they're getting statements. They don't know how to read them. Uh, the card brands, you know, have been very uh, sneaky in, in a sense, whereas they're extremely complicated and complex. If you're not on a, a flat rate, like a PayPal, for example, PayPal does a really good job at simplifying um, their pricing structure. It's a straight, if you're a small business, it's a straight 2.9 and I think 30 cents a transaction. So you know what you're kind of getting into. The stripes and the squares are now block if they're going that road. Um, <laughs> do a good job there. It's straightforward. But, uh, you know, all the other payment providers don't. You've got tiered rates. You've got also known as blended rates here in Canada. So there's some language differences there. Flat rates or interchange plus rates. Um, you know, and people are worried about managing their business. Uh, that's their number one. They want to make sure that the money that they're processing for the day is going into their account, you know, as fast as possible. And they're not so much concerned about doing the recon. Some of them are unable to do the, the reconciliation or they're outsourcing it or they have limited resources with their accounting teams. So, so that's definitely the biggest problem, I would say, um, in the industry. And we, we, we definitely help fill that gap through our, through our services. Let's uh, talk about uh, what kind of services you offer. Um, so you mentioned that um, your niche is in SaaS, right? Uh, is, is it uh, like the main profile of your clients or you also work with uh, other businesses? Yeah, so so right now we can do a lot of things. One of the things that we are you know, working on uh, specifically for 2024 is really zoning in on what we want our offer to be, not necessarily what the clients are looking for from us. Uh, you know, combined, we have over 20 years experience in payments. Um, but what I would say are, you know, our two um, client bases are right now today, uh, we work in an advisory um, role with a lot of investors. So there are, as you can imagine, uh, a number of investors who are looking to invest in the space. Um, and not only in payments, but in fintech in general. So investing in, uh, you know, M&A, mergers and acquisitions, uh, billing softwares, um, the whole plethora of investments happening there. And we work with investors just uh, providing advisory. So advisory is to all public information, of course, as to how the landscape um, actually works in the U.S. Who are the main players? What a, what does that competitive landscape look like? Um, and that's been a really strong, solid client base for us because, uh, as you can imagine, with 20 years combined experience, knowledge, an investor trying to research, it's going to cost uh, them a lot more time and money. Um, so, yeah, so that's been a really good one for us. And then, yeah, this, the second is our is our niche, um, and that is working with SaaS clients who offer um, embedded and integrated payment solutions to their sub merchants. And, you know, we can do a number of different things there. We most our most recent project that we are wrapping up at the end of this month is with a client called VetSource. And with them, we worked in an advisory um, level where they developed their own payment software for the veterinarian space in the U.S. And it's an integrated payment uh, solution for in-clinic, in-veterinarian clinic and in-hospital payment acceptance. So we helped, uh, we worked with developers, product UX to develop this software. 
and it's live and processing and working really well. Uh, we helped with the RFP, so we helped negotiate, uh, you know, some really good buy rates, and we really, really taught them how to model the entire payment infrastructure and build it within their organization uh, as a payment facilitator, actually. So this project really had multiple, multiple layers, and it's going to be a really, really good story for our business to to tell in 2024. We helped them become a payment facilitator. You know, so. so you, you, you mentioned um, modeling of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that was, I guess you could consider it uh, management um, consulting. So kind of building, uh, well, there's two parts to it. There's the operational part to becoming a payment facilitator for a software company. And that is uh, risk, underwriting, anything that has to do with onboarding the actual sub merchants. There's the operational piece of that. You know, how are you doing that? Do you have the technology to do that? Um, we partnered with a third party for both to the technology and also for the, the personnel and, you know, building a merchant support team in house to be able to support those payments as a payment facilitator, software companies are required to really manage the whole end to end process from onboarding to support, et cetera. And they're taking the, you know, the liability um, through that relationship. So just building the, the entire org around that. And then also the infrastructure in terms of the technology. So, you know, what APIs are they using? Uh, are they using the right APIs? Um, what webhooks are they using in terms of notifications? So really building payments within the org and then ensuring that it is running like a well-oiled machine, which can take, it can take years. And it is a, a very significant investment. But once it's up and running, you know, it's a, it's a machine in itself. Uh, and we've been able to do that um, with VetSource. And they are in a really, really good place right now to now just go out and sell their solutions and have things kind of operate and, and run in a really structured manner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it sounds complex. I'm just wondering, like, is there a... Um... How would I put it? Um, is there any sort of uh, minimum size of the organization that will be interested in complexity like that? So, because I'm coming from the you know background background of startups, where you you would just you know put your product together, link it to Stripe. Here we go. We're looking for quick cash. While here, it sounds to me more like a more fundamental robust solution that would be there for years and it does require um you know expertise like you have yeah absolutely so this you know becoming a payment facilitator is not something that a, a startup <laughs> would want to do um right off of the bat for sure or even a, a small scale SaaS company um the Minimum size or scale, I would say you at least have to have the bandwidth to be able to hire and build out a payments team in house. Um, that could be anyone, you know, anywhere from six to eight personnel. And then, of course, you have to have the, the budget to be able to invest and the budget can range depending on whether or not they're doing any development at the time. I have worked with SaaS companies who already have payment uh, softwares and really all they're looking to do is integrate with a payment provider. So there's definitely complexity there. This is not something that a, a startup or a small scale business would want to do. Um, for, for that, we would recommend what is called a managed payfac, which is essentially they're doing the development, they're you know getting decent rates and they can still monetize the solution but they're not handling the onboarding. They're not taking the risk. All of that is done at the payment provider. They're not doing any of the support. Um, so this is absolutely a, a niche. And we've found that with 16,000 plus software companies in the US, none of them are doing it perfectly. None of them have fantastic support or someone in particular, who knows the landscape as well as we do. 
And, you know, those are the clients who are, are coming to us and saying, hey, I need some help navigating this. Here are some of our problems. We have high returns. We have high chargebacks. We need to know how do we manage these? How do we mitigate risk? Um, and there are a lot of third party uh, technology companies, too, that we're partnering up with. Um, Infinicept being one of them. Infinicept is kind of a payment facilitator in a box. Uh, but we're what we're trying to do is really just marry both technology and operational support and bring that to our clients. And it's really at the end of the day, it's it's service. And what we want and what we do offer is a, a white, a white, a, you know, a white glove approach to all of our clients. Whereas if you need something, we're going to be the ones to help and go out and get it and find it for you. You already mentioned some um, typical problems that clients are coming uh, with to you. Like uh, they want to decrease the returns. Uh, can you name uh, more on this list? Like wh what are the... Um, what are the main pain points that um, clients you work with, you know, come to you with? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's the the common problem a lot of smaller businesses have, um, which is, you know, they want to be able to reduce their payment processing rates if they're not on a, a static, you know, 2.75, 2.9, they're on tiered rate structures or IC plus structures, uh, whether they're processing card present or card not present payments. You know they want to see if there's any any way to to save money there, um, so that's one offering that that we do for for SMBs and really what that looks like is just doing a complete overview of how their business is operating, payment provider that they're using, uh, we'll take a look at the last three months processing statements, see what their average interchange rate is, whether or not you know they're 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 um, uh, getting the lowest interchange rate based on how they're processing credit cards. So that's that's one of the, the the biggest things I would say that a lot of the smaller businesses are looking at. And then when you start to go into the the medium corporate size businesses or the SaaS companies or the big e-com marketplaces, um, a lot of the challenges that they have is they is they just don't understand the landscape. They don't know how to navigate it. And they may be working with a provider that's really quite large. And the larger providers are struggling a little bit with support. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with just the common turnover. Uh, but, you know, most level one, tier one uh, support systems that are in place with the payment providers, the, the knowledge is not necessarily there. So there's that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I see is clients not being able to get the support that they need from their from their providers. Makes sense. That that, that explains um, that this kind of services will be needed for larger organizations because you wouldn't feel it much at the small level, at the level of startups, where, you know, the bigger you grow, the uh, more uh, simply cash income you have, uh, the more expensive uh, this uh, transaction fees become and uh, the more risks uh, you deal with. Um, sounds uh, interesting. Um, anything else you, you want to add uh, to wrap it up um, on your side, uh, Miranda? Um, yeah, I was just going to say that uh, the landscape is, is, is changing. Uh, every day. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, who the competitor is today may not be the, the competitor tomorrow. And I think that's one of the greatest challenges for anyone who's working in the payments space is to really understand, uh, you know, some of the key changes, who's acquiring who, there's a ton of M&A in the space. Um, and then, you know, what are the regulations that are changing as well? especially for some of the, the large scale businesses and keeping an eye on all of that um, is, you know, a part-time job in itself. Um, but yeah, for anyone who's ever, you know, interested in, in payments or, or looking for some payments advice can always feel free to, to reach out to me for sure. Awesome. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, that uh, was an interesting conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex.